Hey everyone, it's Tom June here, back with another UK Space News Roundup. This week we've got updates from InSpace Missions and OneWeb on their next round of launches, engine testing activity up at Saxavord, a small UK satellite manufacturer teaming up with an American company to mine asteroids, microgravity quadcoptering, and an updated look at a Rolls-Royce micro-nuclear reactor. So there's plenty to dive into this week, stick around and let's get going. All right, uh, lift off and the clock has started. All right, so this week we start with an update from In Space Missions, who are owned by BAE Systems here in the UK. Now, recently, In Space Missions they built two Prometheus 2 satellites, which were uh, flown aboard that ill-fated and incomplete Virgin Orbit Start Me Up mission back at the beginning of January. Uh, they've now announced that they've partnered with the Singapore Space Technologies Limited company to initiate what they call the Faraday Dragon rideshare mission. Uh, this is an Asia-Pacific regional satellite rideshare mission targeted to launch in 2025. Faraday Dragon will fly multiple payloads for regional space players including government, commercial, financial, research and educational organisations with a total mass to orbit of 60 kilograms, all integrated aboard the Faraday Bell spacecraft. Now, this is a unique configuration because it's a single spacecraft uh, rather than a traditional rideshare hardware. This reduces the size of rocket needed and it lowers launch costs. Not only that, but InSpace have their upcoming Titania launch uh, later on this year, which will feature multiple payloads demonstrating and characterizing high speed free space optical uplinks and downlinks for UK defence and security applications. Now we've also got engine testing activity up at Saxavord, and while it may not have been on Launchpad Fredo just yet, it's still quite exciting and this is going to demonstrate uh, Saxavord continuing partnership with European spaceflight companies. The French startup uh, Latitude, who have also been known by various other names in the past, they completed the first hot fire test campaign of its Navier engine. The Navier engine will power the company's two stage Zephyr launch vehicle, and the Zephyr is designed to be capable of deploying 100 kilograms worth of payloads to uh, an SSO at an altitude of about 700 kilometres. The vehicle's first stage will feature nine of those Navier engines and the second is a single vacuum optimized version of the Navier. Latitude are now targeting a maiden flight for the Zephyr no earlier than 2024. And this is the first in what will be a several months long test campaign uh, up at Saxavord uh, in Shetland. Now this is exciting times for this company, like I said they've gone through several iterations but they seem to be finally finding their footing and with these latest batches of hot fire testing things are certainly looking up for them, hopefully in the near future it will send them skywards and a continuing partnership with Saxavort does bode well because like I said in previous videos there's due to be three launch pads constructed up at Shetland so with RFA already having the rights to use launch pads Fredo and two more in the works. Could we see Latitude utilizing one of those other launch pads along with Skyrora and Astra and ABL systems to say the least. It's exciting times indeed. Now I want to take a minute to say thank you very much to all of my latest subscribers. Uh, if you're not yet subscribed to this channel do consider uh, ticking that button below and click the notification bell for future updates on all things UK space news. Do remember to give this video a little like if you do enjoy it, it really does go a long way to helping the channel and I appreciate it every single time. Now. Um, a small UK satellite manufacturer by the name of Orb Astro. They uh, are teaming up with US startup Astroforge to go and mine asteroids. That's right, this is not some kind of a pipe dream. Uh, in fact, they have, Orb Astro have just built the, the first satellite for Astroforge and it's due to launch into space later this year. 
A, a small CubeSat called Broker One will be launched into low Earth orbit in April on a SpaceX rideshare mission to test Astroforge's technologies and quote unquote orbital refinery for extracting metals from asteroids along with a mass spectrometer to analyse the samples. The aim is to follow this with a larger spacecraft that will try and fly by a near-Earth asteroid collecting data about its composition, including the presence of platinum group metals. Now, Broker 1's payload uh, of Astroforge technology will carry asteroid-like material and attempt to vaporise this and sift through the desired metals from less interesting elements. Now, there is a second mission, like I said, called Broker 2, also going to be built by Orb Astro. This is a larger 100 kilogram uh, vehicle and it will be carried on Intuitive Machines' IM2 Lunar Lander on a SpaceX Falcon 9 trip. This is really, really exciting here because uh, another UK space startup is going to get the chance to fly into deep space aboard this interesting, exciting rideshare mission. Now, Astroforge are being a little bit secretive here and they are not saying what asteroid they've actually identified to uh, go and do this mission with. Uh, they seem to indicate that it would incur risk to do so, but the asteroid is said to be less than 100 meters in diameter. So this uh, anticipated mission is expected to take around 8 to 11 months to reach the asteroid, uh, using a lunar slingshot and a propulsion system built by Don Aerospace for a heliocentric orbit roughly 22 million miles from Earth. Now we turn to OneWeb. Uh, if you've been paying attention to American space news, you'll know that OneWeb launched a batch of 40 satellites on a SpaceX rideshare mission back in January. This is now going to be followed up with their next rideshare mission launching from India in late March of this year. And the next batch of satellites have successfully flown on board an Antonov aircraft to India where they will be integrated onto an Indian GSLV rocket for launch later in March. Now, this is the penultimate launch for OneWeb, and they've got about 80 satellites left to launch uh, before their 648 satellite broadband constellation is complete. The last mission, Mission 18, is due to be carried out by SpaceX later in 2023 upon successful deployment of those satellites by the Indian Space Agency. Now, a small UK startup company called Gravity Lab announced a world first for microgravity research and testing. At their UAV testing site at Pradhanak Airfield in Cornwall, they successfully tested the first ever commercial microgravity service using their unmanned aerial vehicle or UAV. Basically, it's a quadcopter. Uh, they flew it up to 2,000 feet and then released a payload uh, within their patent protected Louis drop pod and achieving a period of microgravity which lasted around about 5 to 10 seconds. Gravity Lab have got grander designs here and they do believe that they will be able to allow easier access to the microgravity uh, testing environment. Obviously, in normal circumstances, if you want to test equipment and hardware in the uh, vacuum of space or in micro G conditions, normally you would require a rocket to do this or access to the International Space Station. However, this is somewhat expensive, and Gravity Lab are hoping that their technology is going to, uh, you know, offer up cheaper alternatives. And quite frankly, this is really cool because who wouldn't want to take a UAV? up to about 2,000 feet and drop some things from it just to test out microgravity for a few seconds. Now, in other news, Rolls-Royce have just released a brand new image of their proposed micro-nuclear reactor, which is going to be used for spacecraft propulsion. Um, it's the same design as presented at the IAC back in 2021. However, uh, the company have provided a few more details about how it will operate. Uh, they advise that this uh, micro-reactor is designed to use an inherently safe and extremely robust fuel form with each uranium particle encapsulated in multiple protective layers that act as a containment system, allowing it to extend with extreme conditions. Read into that 
what you will. Uh, <laughs> you know, there's not very much as far as an update is concerned. But take a look at the thing. It is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, and quite frankly, if we get to see, uh, you know, several of these aboard a spacecraft or even a scaled up version it just goes to show they really are working diligently behind the scenes and hopefully the uk can uh, be a player in the nuclear spaceflight propulsion arena in the years to come we already know that the americans they are looking heavily at uh, these projects which include uh, darpa and the nuclear space race is really back on so this is up to the UK Space Agency and all of the companies uh, these, this side of the Atlantic to continue their work, to continue driving forward and to not get left behind because the last thing we want is to fall out of the race like we did in the space race in the 1970s without having ever really done very much at all. But this time with Rolls-Royce on board, it's looking good. Um, we're still waiting for an update on the Sabre project and hopefully that will come soon as well. But for now, we know that nuclear is on the cards and the future is looking very bright indeed. Now, I do appreciate it has been a couple of weeks since my last video. Uh, I have been a little bit ill, but I want to thank each and every single one of you for either reaching out to me and interacting over social media or just sticking with this channel in general. It's very much appreciated and I can't believe that we are still growing strong. So, like I said before, if you haven't considered subscribing, please do so uh, and tick that notification bell for future UK Space News updates. I've been Tom June, until next time, I'll see you later.